What's up guys, good morning, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be adding some power to the Seagate. Guys, I'm proud to announce that we've got our first sponsor for the channel, and that's Solar Performance. If you guys are like me and you're trying to drop into the tens in the quarter mile, or you just want some more power and better throttle response, the guys over at Solar Performance are making that possible. Their website is solarengineering.com, and they sell ported throttle bodies for the C8 Corvette. Just head over to the store, click on General Motors. The very first one that pops up is for the LT2. You're gonna click on that. The price that they're charging for these ported throttle bodies are 275 and that's after you do a core exchange. They say the benefits of the ported throttle body are lower weight to power ratio at the park throttle for a more nimble, spirited driving experience, linearization smoothing of the curve for more predictable response and crisper shifts, immediate response right off idling, no hesitation or stumble, does not require tuning and warranty safe, more air and power at every single throttle position after idle, crucial for starting and expanding power gain modification. Now the guys over at Solar Performance were generous enough to give me a promo code to give to you guys to get 5% off your throttle body. The promo code will be in the description below Low, but it's RWDC8. I wish that I had the throttle body to show you guys right now, but it's on its way. It should be here before nine o'clock. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and deconstruct what we need to. So when that throttle body gets here, we go ahead and put it in right away. All right, so the first step is gonna be getting this tub out. Remove the net if you got one. After you get the net out of there, there's some of these twist off things that hold the net in. There are two, one on each side. Then you got four T15s that hold each one of these guys in. Go ahead and get those things out. Pulls off like that. I believe once you get that out, this whole thing should just pull right up. Next step is to get this shield off. I believe there's 17 T15s. And then once you get those out, the shield should just pop right off to reveal the air box. So you're gonna start off the air box by getting four 10 mils off of each side of the couplers. After you get those unbolted, they just slide right out like that. Next thing we want to work on is getting this air box out. Not only is it connected to the throttle body, but it's got four more bolts at the bottom, two on each side, two coming from the back and two coming from the front. The rear two aren't that bad. It's the front two that kind of suck. But if you have one of these little things that allow you to put an angle on it, it shouldn't be too bad. Along with these bottom two bolts, you're going to have some connectors that you want to get off the air box as well. This one we'll just go ahead and pinch here. One connector there. This one's already broken off from a previous time we had to take out the air box. But you only have these two and then we have some more on the other side all right this is on the driver's side we've got a bolt right here that we got to take out it's a little bit of a pain to get to but those little angle things really help you out all right one's out one to go this is over on the passenger side and that's the bolt right there all right the fourth bolt is out and then you're also going to want to disconnect the mass airflow sensor while you're on this side just gonna pull that clip back, push down, and pull out. I'm gonna come back over on the driver's side. I'm gonna disconnect the air box because there's a connector right here that I don't know how to take apart. So I'm gonna leave this connected and I'm just gonna disconnect it back here and then up here from the throttle body. All right, now that we have that loose, I believe we can take the air box out. Now be careful when you take out this air box because there's a bunch of connectors that are connected to it. I just don't wanna go and rip everything apart. Here's a good look at the engine side of the air box. So you have a bunch of connectors that are all connected to the back of this. So be careful and don't just go ripping this box out. So I'm gonna disconnect this guy. There we go. And then over on the passenger side, it looks like got one connector that's just like connected to the back of the air box. So we'll just take out that entire piece, and reconnect that when we're done. And then we, it looks like we got some kind of ventilator here. So we're just gonna pull this off the air box as well and leave that on the car. So. That's the airbox. Here's a closer look at this connector right here that I wanted to leave attached to this. I just don't know how to get this thing off, so I didn't want to mess with it at all. But we're just gonna disconnect this boot from the throttle body and just leave this with the car. And then it should just slide off of there. We'll slide this to the side, so we won't have to worry about that. And now the throttle body. Here's a shot at it from the rear. That's our stock throttle body. I usually like to wait till I have the replacement part to kind of check it out. It doesn't look like there's anything connected to the throttle body on the driver's side, just two bolts. However, over on the passenger side, it looks like there's one connector here, and then there's just those two bolts. Should be easy peasy. All right, and the connector's actually pretty easy to get off as well. It's upside down, so you can't really see it, but it's just a pull back and squeeze, and it comes right off. All right, so let's get those four bolts. I bet they're 10 mils, and we'll be good to go. All right, so the four bolts, three of them are really easy to see. One, two, and three. The last one's kind of hidden. It's right over here. 
and then the other two you want to get from the top. The throttle body isn't like stuck on there with the gasket or anything, so it's already like really loose. So get ready to catch it as soon as you get that fourth bolt out. That's number three. All right, and then we got our full fourth bolt out. Comes right off just like that. Too easy. All right, look what got here a little early from Solar Performance. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Guys, our first sponsored part. How crazy is this? Some paper. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that looks fancy. All right, there she is. Comes with instructions. Let's see if we've been doing it right this whole time. Flat head screwdriver, 10 millimeter socket, 15 minutes. Turn ignition off, disconnect the battery. Oh, I did not do that. Number two, open the hood. Tells you where all the screws are, where all the bolts are, I mean. The clamps that you need to take off. Take off the duct, disconnect the connector by the throttle body. Loosen the screws for the clamps. Removal. Make sure gasket blue rubber not shown. In manifold is corresponding gland reposition if required. Blue gasket. There's no blue gasket there. Ah, there's our blue gasket. It looks good. Four installation, reverse steps, ignition on, let idle for three minutes, ignition off for one minute. Ooh, that sounds pretty important. Things I wouldn't have known. Repeat steps eight and nine one more time. So you need to go ahead and turn it on, let it idle for three minutes, and then turn it off for one minute. You do that twice, and then you need to have the ignition on, drive normally at 44 miles per hour or greater, and allow vehicle to decelerate to a stop and idle. Repeat four times for 50 to 100 miles, subdivided into five to 10 driving cycles, including cool down periods between start. Whoa, okay. So there's more than just taking it off and bolt it back on. You gotta do some other steps as well. It also does say normal everyday driving meets this step. So if this sounds really confusing to you, just daily drive your car, you'll be good to go. All right, so we got both of our throttle bodies here. Let's see if we can find any differences. The most notable difference you can see are the massive holes up here that they cut out. Up here, it's got a nice big wall. It looks like they shaved and ground all this stuff down right here. This has like a lip to it. This has all been kind of smoothed out. It actually looks really cool. That looks pretty neat. I wonder how that affects the car at idle since it's so much more air going through there than there. This piece in the center has also been ground down too. Little notches in it have been made. That's pretty interesting. Made in the USA by Solar Performance, 91 millimeters. Again, guys, if y'all are gonna get the Solar Performance throttle body, make sure you put RWDC8 in the promo code so you guys can get 5% off your throttle body. All right, let's get this throttle body in here. So it's gonna go right back where the other one came off. Let's start a screw in here. Get our second screw in here. There's our third one. Gonna get them all up there, nothing tight. And then we'll tighten them all down at the same time. There's our fourth one there. And then we'll get them all snug down. All right, all four of those are tight. Get our little coupler on here. Pop that on the throttle body. Oh yeah, don't forget to put your connector into the throttle body. Snap it on, put the safety clip in. Tighten the clamp for the coupler. Now for the air box, just make sure you get all your wires out of the way. I'm, I like to just push them all towards the front. All right, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with the, putting it back together. You guys saw how it came apart, so just reverse everything. We'll pick back up where we start the car up for three minutes and then we let it cool down for a minute. All right, guys, we got our all buttoned back up. Let's refer back over to our instructions here. It wants the ignition on, let it idle for three minutes, ignition off for one minute. Repeat steps eight and nine one more time. All right, we got our timer ready. Go ahead and start her up. So we still have a minute and a half. I already noticed that it's kind of louder. Like after the cold start, it usually like gets down to a low rumble and kind of like sits there and rumbles. But now it's kind of like, almost like it's idling higher or it's just a little louder, I don't know. Might have to do with all those cutouts that were in the throttle body and then that, those little notches in the flap. Solar Performance also said that it's gonna take a little while for it to break in for the computer to learn everything. So it's actually perfect because we're going this weekend to Homestead for a track day. When we get back from there, we'll head up to the drag strip and see if the throttle body makes any difference. All right, shut her down. We're gonna let her cool off for about a minute and then start again. All right, so the second time we started up for the three minutes, it's got a nice deep low rumble like it did before. It even sounds a little lopier. Maybe this is all a part of the break-in process for that throttle body. It actually sounds really good now. All right, so we're on our last ignition off for one minute. Now we're gonna go drive at 44 miles an hour or greater and just let it decelerate itself to a stop and idle. You wanna do that four more times within the 50 to 100 miles, divide it. So basically every 20 miles, just do it again. But if you don't have time for this, normal everyday driving meets this step. I just wanna see if there's any difference that I can feel right off the bat. Again, they did say that it does need a break in before you really feel anything, but let's just give it a shot. All right, so I know you guys can't really see much right now because it's that dark at night, but call me crazy. These 
shifts are so much harder now. So much more instant. Like instant, instant. Like they were instant already, but this is like, there's a difference, I can tell. All right, so let's go. Braking instructions say get at least 40 something mile an hour and then just slow down to an idle. So we're gonna give that a go. All right guys, call me crazy, but I swear to God, the shifts are, I could definitely tell the difference. They like, the, sh the shifts got definitely more aggressive. They like kind of punch into every gear. I don't know if that's just the computer trying to learn the new throttle body or whatnot, but it definitely, all the gears felt way more aggressive. And then the throttle response is just instantaneous. It's like ready to go right off the bat. It's definitely, it definitely feels different. And then also the sound. I mean, the car is already extremely loud, but you could definitely tell it's like a little more like lopier almost. It's it's different, it's, it's a little different. Can't wait to get this thing broken in. Can't wait to get to the track and get some real results more than just like what I feel, but honestly, I could definitely feel a difference. Again, guys, special thanks to Solar Performance for sponsoring this video, and thank you for giving us a promo code to give to everybody else to get 5% off. If you guys like that video, please go ahead and give that a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that as well. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you guys next video. Later.